we pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Let us start our worship service with number 103, Blessed Be the Name. We will sing all three verses. Sacred friendship, our faith is proclaimed. God is her witness to sacred friendship in the gospel. Without ceasing, we pray for one another. Strengthen our spirits as we encourage each other's ministry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you as we come. To give thanks for all the many blessings of life. Be with us as we sing blessings to you. Be with John as he brings your message of love to each one of us. And as we go through our daily lives, Heavenly Father, may we take that message, apply it to our lives. And spread that love to everyone that we meet. 
Heavenly Father, we ask your continued blessings on this small church. Be with everyone that's here today. We ask your blessings on each of those that were unable to be with us today. Continue to bless our city, state, country, and the world, Heavenly Father. continue to help us to spread love around all of us. Continue to forgive us, Heavenly Father, when we go through our life and we make mistakes. Most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for his life. We thank you for his love. We thank you for his teaching. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that most precious prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy Lord will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Let us sing number 281, The Bond of Love. responded to me on Facebook this week. I've been friends with him for about a year, I guess, on Facebook. Don't know him that well. Don't take this the wrong way, but he said that I respect you, John, more than any Christian I've ever known in my life. Says I don't agree with posts. I posted something about science and follow up kind of of last week's sermon. Something to the effect that if you go deep into science, as all of the smartest people in the world that's ever lived, you can't keep from believing. The entity, God, our Heavenly Father, or the intelligent designer, you just can't, you can't, you can't keep from believing in that. And you know, I 
shared the scripture in Romans 1. Now, the greatest evidence that exists to support that God is real, God is the creator, etc., is creation. This man was an atheist. <coughs> I forgot to mention that. He was an atheist because of the way that he had been, he had grown up in a very fundamental church and the way his father had treated him over, uh, I guess, their Christian faith. <coughs> but I will respond to this man. Uh, I have every confidence that I will be able to change his mind and help him come to believe in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will have eternal, everlasting Life. So let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all the blessings that we're blessed with. We thank you for creation and allowing us to live at this time in our history, in this community, in a time where we understand more and more about the details of your creation. We're so blessed to know that we are yours and you are ours and we're your special creation that you have told us in scripture. Father, as we meet today at Millbrook, help us, we want to be keenly aware that we're meeting with one another and we're also meeting with you and let your presence be real to each one of us. Help us now as we pray to come to you in your loving profoundness from our hearts. We want to feel you, to grow in your love as we journey with you today in this life and all the days of our life. Thank you for leading us, loving us, and sending Jesus to teach us, to show us how to live our lives. And then he died for us so that we might be restored to an everlasting loving relationship with you. Help us, Father, to more fully grasp your true essence and honor you as the creator and controller of all. Help us that like you, we can love those who are different from us because you loved all of your creation, help us and all people to do the same. Father, we pray for <clears throat> people this morning, people that are having to deal with problems that may seem overwhelmingly, people that are oppressed, the people that are victims of COVID, People that are suffering due to extreme weather, those that are hungry and sick, those whose freedoms are prohibited by the injustice of others. And Father, we pray for our own community, the hurts, the problems, some known only by you, for our loved ones that are sick that we have mentioned this morning, for those who have been deeply hurt, for those that are needing money, for those who need to express their deep <coughs> emotions, their hurts, their feelings, but have no one to hear them. This morning, please touch their lives, with your strong and loving presence and restore them to joy and peace. Make us more sensitive and loving to you and to one another. Bring us to both humility 
and also boldness. Give us the courage to be merciful, the endurance to be faithful to those in our care, just as you are with each one of us. It is in the name of Christ Jesus that we come to you today as your Holy Spirit has led us that we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Testament scripture lesson today from Numbers 21. The people of Israel had become discouraged and spoke against God and Moses. As a result, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and many people died as a result of it. So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent bit, had bitten any man, that he behold the serpent of brass, <clears throat> and he lived. <clears throat> Jesus later compared himself to, to the serpent in John 3, 14 through 18. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, <coughs> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> so our gospel lesson for this morning gives us a sure and certain hope that God has not forgotten us, that God does indeed love us more than any of us can ever begin to imagine. The only place in the New Testament where the bronze serpent is referred to, it points clearly to the death of Christ Jesus. As Moses put the serpent on a pole and lifted it up so the people could see it, the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him May have eternal life. Humankind as a whole, we have been bitten with a deadly disease. The only cure is to look at Christ Jesus dying on the cross and find life through believing in him, not just life, but abundant life. The cross is the ladder that's set up between heaven and earth. So let us always focus on that. Let us always focus on our mission. Let us always keep this table of holy communion as our focus, remembering what Christ Jesus did on the cross and also remembering his resurrection. So let us take these emblems today as Jesus invited 
everyone to do and focus and remember the cross of salvation that Christ Jesus offers to everyone. Let us sing number 67, The Love of God, verse 1 and 3. You know, I, I, I can't imagine what it would feel like to live in this world and not to believe in anything other than this world <clears throat> and nothing else. It's it's one of the things that makes me just feel so blessed. <clears throat> we are so blessed. And we're so blessed to be able to come to this table every Sunday. When Jesus met with his disciples, with his friends, they celebrated Passover. It was huge. It was huge to Jesus. So they celebrated Passover first. And then in the context of Passover, Jesus would become the Lamb of God, the Passover for mankind. And he left us the new covenant, this table, the Eucharist, of Holy Communion. And in doing so, he took bread, he blessed it, he gave it to each one and told them to take, eat. That this is my body that is broken for you. <clears throat> 
as often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, Jesus, bless the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me until I come again. We are constantly bombarded with all of the horrible things that go on around us in our world today. Most all of the media focuses on the bad things, the negative things that are happening. Usually one maybe uplifting positive event at the very end of national news. I'm always glad when we have March Madness coming up and baseball season. We can focus our attention on things that are exciting, things to make us feel good, things that are fun. Now is also a great time to focus our attention on the signs of spring in all of the new life that is starting to appear and the old life that is starting to reappear. Now is also time that we continue to focus on Lent, our fourth Sunday of Lent today. Fourth Sunday is a special day of Lent. Can't remember what it's called, but a time for celebration in their Lent season. It's easy to be consumed with the horribles, the negatives, the conflicts. They can make us forget that there are still so many wonderful things that are going on in the world and so many beautiful things to see and experience. When we focus on the bigger picture, we turn toward God. And we can be liberated from all of this other stuff. When the Israelites became so negative and complaining and spoke against God in response to their, to their rebelliousness, God caused snakes to bite them. When they looked past their griping, and focused on the bigger picture, their suffering ended. Because they had their thoughts directed toward God. Faith in God can always satisfy us when we focus on God. This is a real lesson for each of us and for all churches, for all Christians. Faith in God can heal us all, and the snake bites will end. Think how smoothly and effectively the church would be today if people just focused on the real message, the real message. Not what man has done to the message of Jesus, but the real message of Christ Jesus. Christianity would start to spread again like it did in the first few centuries after the resurrection. People everywhere could focus on the one who is the source of life, abundant life, and open their eyes to the presence of our Heavenly Father. And any time that we focus in an alternative direction, we open ourselves up 
losing our way, to being consumed, or with limited ability to see the bigger picture. So, our time. Now, let us get back to our Millbrook and open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit of God and see the bigger picture to see where our focus should be and to know that we are helping other people have a better life and we're helping other people connect to Christ Jesus. May God bless you today in your giving. Let us lift our hearts up in praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, we always want to share every moment of our life with you, being mindful of you as their grand creator of your love for creation and your love for each one of us. We thank you for Millbrook, our congregation. We thank you for the gifts that have given, given back to support our church and the mission of our church. Help us always to be strengthened and rely on your Holy Spirit, Father. And always trust your Holy Spirit, no matter what. We come to you in the name of our Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, J.W. has been a good trooper and sang the pretty songs with me the last two or three weeks. So he wants to do a rip snorter. So we're going to do a rip snorter. Here we go. I like to stay here longer than man's a lot of days and watch the fleeting changes of my sunny dead ways. But if I sing the cause me to invest in all my life, I'll live with them forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'm living glory. By and by, I'll tell and sing your story. Bear on, on, here with my dear Redeemer, no more to die. Oh, yes, I'm living glory. By and Day and always remember that God loves you and that love is limitless. My message today is entitled The Love of Jesus, and it's from John chapter 3, 14 through 21. I want to read that right now. 
And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son to the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, <clears throat> that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. For those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen and their deeds have been done in God, the word of the Lord. <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever been aware of it. I know that this church is barely well versed in the scriptures. I know that from being in Sunday school with you. Have you ever wondered why that John, in the Gospel of John, how John refers to himself? We all know, don't we? He doesn't refer to himself by name. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Wow. Wow. Now we know that his given name was actually John, the son of Zebedee. We know he's the same guy who wrote the epistles of John and also the book of Revelation. But he doesn't call himself by that. He calls himself by the, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Wonder why. I wonder why. Did Jesus love John more than he loved the others? It does not appear that John actually felt that way. There's no indication of that. John talks about how Jesus loved Mary and Martha. How he tells how Jesus wept over the death of Lazarus, his friend. And we know that Jesus had a special loving relationship with Mary Magdalene, who followed him all through his ministry and was there when he was crucified. Our scripture lesson for this morning, John quotes Jesus as saying, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, what made John feel so special? Think about it. Could it be that after having a life-changing encounter with the begotten Son of the living God, or after having experienced the firsthand the forgiving and accepting love of Christ Jesus, or after having traveled with him for so long, after having watched him die on the cross of Calvary, and after having seen him being resurrected from the dead, John's life had been changed so dramatically, his identity has had been forever marked by the love of Christ that there was no other name by which John could think of to express who he was. Have you ever known somebody that you knew loved you so much 
that you had no doubt in your mind that they would love you no matter what? That you could feel like that you could say, I am the person whom that person loves. And because of that love, my life is worth living. I have a purpose, I have a meaning, I have a calling. I am made to feel like a person of value, of worth, because of that love. If you have, you're very, very blessed, aren't you? As Christians together, this morning here at Millbrook Christian Church and on Zoom, if we're able to get even a glimpse of the nature of the profound love that God has for each and every one of us, then we should be able to leave here with the life affirming and life giving ability to say, I am the disciple. Jesus' love. Instead of loved, I should say loves. I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of faults. Jesus knows every single one of them. I'm not perfect, not even close. Sherry will tell you that. I'm always making mistakes. And there's some sins in my life that I just can't hardly get a handle on, overcome, shake off. I may be too open and talk too much. I'm definitely overweight. Sure not wealthy. I'm just plain and simple. Maybe my family doesn't treat me very well. But you know what? Jesus loves me. And knowing that makes my life worth living no matter what anything else or everything else is. I believe it, I know it to be true. And all my personality flaws, all my problems pale in comparison to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, knowing that he loves me despite myself and nothing on earth or in the universe that exists or ever will exist and change that fact. Romans 8, 39, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In John 3, 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. There's nothing more profound than this. There is no greater news than this. The story of a man who traveled a great distance for an interview with this distinguished scholar. When the man arrived, he received a cordial reception. After being seated, he said to his host, Doctor, I have noticed that the walls of your study are lined with books from the ceiling to the floor. No doubt you have read them all. I know you have traveled extensively. You've had the privilege of conversing with some of the world's greatest and wisest men, the leaders of thought, the creators of opinion, the movers and shakers of the earth that happens in this world. 
I have come a long way just to ask you one question. Tell me, of all you have learned, what is the one thing most worth knowing? Putting his hand on the guest's shoulder, the scholar replied with emotion in his voice. My dear sir, he says, of all of the things that I have learned, only two are really worth knowing. The first is that I am a great sinner. The second is that Christ Jesus is a great savior. I'm sure don't mean to offend any, anyone, but we, all of us, we all fall short. We all fall, don't honor our love journey with our Heavenly Father like we should through Christ. Right here, now, seated in the sanctuary of Millbrook Christian Church and on Zoom, we're just a bunch of sinners. But we're a bunch of sinners that have been forgiven and saved by the grace of God. Yeah, sometimes we're hateful to other people, to each other. Sometimes our feelings get hurt by somebody being hateful to us or we hurt somebody else. Sometimes the pastor messes up. We're all guilty of falling short of our, at times, with our behaviors and with our words. But another fact is true this morning. Right here, right now, seated in the sanctuary of Millbrook Christian Church, and all of the people that are on Zoom are people who have Christ Jesus as their great Savior. That scripture makes me real fine to hold my emotions in. <clears throat> A little girl had learned in church that Jesus watches over her and sees everything she does. She said, shares that with her mother and her mother asks her, doesn't that bother you that he sees everything that you do? Oh no, the little girl replies. He loves me so much he can't keep his eyes off of me. That's the truth out of mouths of children. It's true for every one of us, not just us, the world. We don't have a greater need than to know and love Christ better and better as we live our lives, to have a growing passion for Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world, the Christian life, it does not. So much center on rules, on ethics, but rather on a new way of seeing and thus a new way of being. When we begin to see ourselves as being loved by our creator, totally, completely without reservations, but also as sinners who've made mistakes, <laughs> who will continue to make mistakes, it is only then that we can turn to God for his forgiving grace. And when we do this, we learn and we are amazed that a holy God, the Father, already loves us despite our mistakes 
for whatever defects we have. The Church of Christ Jesus is a community of people who believes that God loves them enough to die for their salvation. Like alcoholics on the path of recovery, we share a mutually acknowledged weakness and an understanding that we cannot overcome sin on our own. We need our Heavenly Father. If we are not humbled by our faith in the God of love and his forgiveness, we need to re-examine our faith. What kind of faith we actually have. Paul writes <coughs> in Ephesians, like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Jesus, who was sinless, he had every right to be repulsed by the behavior of those that were around him, that he came in contact with, yet he treated the most notorious of sinners with love and mercy, not condemnation. And this is what Jesus is still doing today. I've used this illustration before. The young son of a very committed Christian father became ill. After the boy had undergone an exhaustive series of tests, the father was told the shocking news that his son had terminal illness. After earnestly seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit, he went with a heavy heart through the hospital to his son's bedside. First, he read a passage of scripture and had a time of prayer with his dear son. Then he gently told him that the doctors could promise him only a few more days to live. Are you afraid to meet Jesus, my son, the father asked. Blinking away the tears, the little fellow said bravely, No, not if he's like you, Dad. The Bible tells us that when we believe in Christ Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit that makes us children of God. And by the Holy Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father, which is an expression of a very close relationship with God. It's like calling God Daddy. John, a humble follower of Christ Jesus from the earliest days of his ministry, one of the apostles who gives us an eyewitness, an eyewitness testimony of the life and the words of Jesus. One that had been changed by the ultimate love of God that he could only refer to himself <clears throat> as a disciple whom Jesus loved. And yet John knew full well that Jesus loves you and me, the entire world, in the same fashion. So today, may each one of us clearly know that you, I, we, everyone, we are also the person, the disciple, whom Jesus loves. 
we can do that. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we have anyone with us today that's never made that confession in Christ Jesus. It's never come as John 3.16 tells us. We would invite you to do that today. If there's anyone that would like to join our congregation from another congregation, we would be honored to accept your membership. If you'd like to come and kneel at our altar during this time, please feel free to do that. We will be singing number 430, I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me over the world the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Jesus Absolutely. Dear God, thank you for bringing us here together and, and worshiping with you and with each other because the more we learn, the more we commune with each other, then the stronger our faith is, the stronger our foundation, our belief is in you. And we are just so thankful for that. And, and thank you for this lesson today. And, and thank you for the cross as we reflect upon that during this time of Lent and what it means to our lives and what it means to our church and what it means to the world. Let us reflect upon that today. Let us become stronger in our faith so that we can communicate this and be a tool for the healing of your creation. Be with us this week. Walk with us. Surround us with your love. Bring us back together next week. In your sweet son's name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh, that's true.